welcome to the event, Lectures on Exchange, organized by the Internationalization at Home Department of the International Cooperation Office at the aim of this event is to share and discuss possibilities of international cooperation through virtual exchange. The BRAVE program, Brazilian Virtual Exchange, was presented yesterday by Professor Lena Salomão from UNESP. Today, Tiffany McBerry from Pennsylvania State University will talk about the EDGE program, Experiential Digital Global Engagement. Uh, Tiffany, it is a pleasure to receive you virtually at Wayne. Thank you very much for sharing your EDGE experience with, you, with us. Welcome our speaker. I invite Professor Marcio Pascual Cassandri, the head of the International Cooperation Office. Good afternoon to everyone. Thank you for coming to our virtual activities, the second day. And thank you, Luciana, Milena, and all people involved in the organization of this day. Uh, yesterday was a day that we learned a lot from the experience of UNESP. And today we have more news from the EDGE project. And thank you, Tiffany or Ms. Maguire, for accepting the invitation and being able to bring the opportunity of this project uh, to our academic community. Uh, we at the International Office are committed to creating and developing internaliza internationalization uh, strategies for our university. And internationalization at home is an axis that has been encouraged and valued. Um, and I have to mention that the support received by the American Council of Education and CAPES has helped us uh, the importance of uh, internal actions and activities as new openings of internationalization and that with a very low cost, I have to mention also, um, we have been advanced in international, international, internationalization at home, mainly, la, mainly now when academic mobility has taken a new form it is virtual now, totally virtual, and learning exchanges generate new knowledge for academics. Mm -hmm. And we are looking for new possibilities for exchange knowledge and collective learning. And we believe for sure that EDGE will be a great possibility for our universities. And I'd like to, to thank you again, uh, Tiffany, and I hope you enjoy all the participants. Thank you mm -hmm. and have a good day. Good afternoon. Thank you. Oh, okay, thank you, Marcio. Before Professor McQuarrie starts her talk, I'll read her biodata. Tiffany McQuarrie, Assistant Teaching Professor of English and Professor in Charge of Experiential Digital Global Engagement, EDGE, at the Pennsylvania State University, Beaver Campus, first developed an interest in global education in November 2016, when she joined the campus's EDGE team. In January 2019, she was awarded a Global Faculty Fellowship and used her uh, fellowship to educate other Penn State faculty on how to create EDGE collaborative projects in their courses. She assumed the position of professor in charge of EDGE in May 19, and has been excited to see growing interest in uh, the program as more than eight, 85 faculty from 18 Penn State campuses have expressed interest in developing a project for their students. In April 2021, the EDGE program received the Advancing a Global Penn State Award for Outstanding Program. McPerry has partnered with faculty from Arava Institute in Israel, Safe and Safely Agrotechnical University in Kazakhstan, and both FATEC Presidente Prudente and FATEC Bauru in Brazil to develop a collaborative project for her students. In April 2021, McPerry received the Advancing a Global Penn State Award for Outstanding Leadership in International Education. McPerry throws at the challenge of using innovative pedagogy with global strategies to best equip and prepare our students to live and work in a global society. Tiffany, thank you again for being here this afternoon. 
Uh, and now she's going to start her talk and later we'll have some time for a chat with her about the EDGE project. Great. Well, thank you so much, Luciana. I appreciate it. And welcome, Boatarji. It's good to see everyone. <laughs> um, and it was, it was thrilling before uh, y'all logged on. Uh, Luciana was sharing that, and Marcio also shared that um, you heard about UNESPI um, yesterday and, and met uh, one of my colleagues with whom I have partnered, uh, Christina. So that's exciting that, that, um, that she was able to share as well. So as she shared, I'm Tiffany McCory. And I just appreciate the opportunity to share with you today. And so Tracy, if you could um, bring up the presentation, please. And next, please. So here is what you can expect from our time together today. Uh, first, I'll explain briefly what EDGE, Experiential Digital Global Engagement is share some sample projects, and then talk about resources that Penn State has available for, um, for our international partners as well as for our Penn State partners. Next, please. So EDGE is a project-based international virtual exchange that is also referred to as internationalization at home. And we adapted EDGE from the State University of New York's Collaborative Online International Learning Program that's often referred to as COIL. And at Penn State, we call it EDGE um, to emphasize its connection to the Penn State strategic priorities, specifically transforming education and empowering through digital innovation. And probably as you heard yesterday, uh, I think UNESP uses Brave, I think, is the name of their, um, their program. So it has different names, but it's the same idea, the project-based international virtual exchange. So EDGE provides international education, especially during times of limited, unpredictable mobility and global accessibility, regardless of student resources. And that's one of the benefits that our students derive um, is that not everybody can afford to travel abroad uh, or have the opportunity to travel abroad. So EDGE is that perfect combination that still allows for that uh, international viewpoints, international skills to be developed um, despite travel. So in an article, Virtual Change 101, that was dated June 4th of 2020 and posted on NAFSA's website, and that's an association for international educators, it emphasized that virtual exchange provides an important equity component for international education, given the large numbers of students unable to pursue in-person opportunities. And then further, Don Wood, who is a Dean of Global Learning at Kirkwood Community College in Iowa in the United States of America, adds, if we're really trying to provide access to everyone, it can't just be mobility. It has to be a menu of opportunities. So when mobility resumes, hopefully soon, EDGE projects can still be a way opportunities for lesser resource students who may not be able to study abroad. Next, please. So here's how it works. Faculty of EDGE projects group students together in international teams comprised of students from both Penn State University and the International Partner Institution to work collaboratively to complete a project that will meet the objectives for each course. So because almost every course that we teach involves some sort of group work that can be done, either student work that can be done either in pairs or in groups, almost any course can include an EDGE collaborative project. And courses do not need to be the same topic or, or even the same academic field as long as the project completion can meet the learning goals in both classes. 
So in fact, this interdisciplinary potential is one of the strengths of EDGE. So interdisciplinary projects often mirror real world work experiences and they lead to rich discussion as students work together to solve a problem, examining it from a different perspective and then even through a different cultural lens. So imagine, just to give you an example, engineering students working with nursing students to um, uh, improve or redesign a nursing home. So the nursing students would present their needs, their requirements and challenges while the engineering students would navigate those challenges and offer innovative solutions. So what a perfect way to blend areas of, to bring together different areas of expertise to work on a um, single project. So to date, all EDGE projects at Penn State have taken place in English, but EDGE projects do not have to be delivered in English. However, it depends on the student composition, uh, course content, and course objectives. Next, please. So because of academic calendar differences and time zone differences, often EDGE projects are just a four to six week collaboration. They focus on at least one shared project. Now it's important to note that faculty do not need to completely redesign a course. They simply need to either modify an existing project in their course or create a new project for their course that can be completed in collaboration with their international partners students. So for students to gain global competency and intercultural competency, it's important that the project requires students to act collaboratively as members of an international team. So task design needs to be very intentional so that um, it ends up being collaborative and not just a shared project. Because what could happen is if students were asked to co-write um, an essay, let me give you a very real example. So on Monday, um, my students in business writing just submitted a written proposal with their international partners at FATEC uh, Bauru campus. And, and, um, and so they were writing this proposal. But my business writing students were paired with technology students at uh, FATEC Bauru. And so my students needed the knowledge, um, the, the project was to develop an app or to propose the development of an app that would help to solve a problem caused by the global pandemic. So my students knew how, you know, the pandemic affected the United States. They needed the information for how the pandemic affected folks in Brazil, and then they needed the expertise, uh, the technical expertise of the technology students in, in, on their teams in order to work together to write this proposal. So they were dependent on one another for information. It's not as though, you know, um, they could write a portion of the project, send it to their team, and then just kind of combine the project all together. So it had to be collaborative. Um, and partners, um, both partners, faculty partners, do not need to agree on a collaborative project. Uh, oh, excuse me, <laughs> they do. They do need to agree on a collaborative project or a deliverable. That's another element of EDGE collaborative projects. So you do not necessarily need to require the same deliverable nor do you need to use the same grading rubrics for your students, especially if your EDGE course is interdisciplinary. So I developed a rubric for my students uh, based on the, the, the ideas that we discussed in business writing. And then my faculty partner had his own rubric based on the technology pieces that their classes covered. So we didn't even grade our students the same. Uh, we didn't have the same grading rubric. While the global learning objectives may be the same, 
for both courses, the, um, the learning objectives and the methods you choose to measure the attainment of those learning objectives in each course may differ widely. And, and that was the example that I wanted to share with, with my faculty partner. And then finally, assessment is a large component of any in, institutional course, and it needs to be defined upfront and made transparent to students. So whatever you decide, critical reflection is an integral aspect to their learning about and engaging with the content from a global perspective. Next, please. So I shared that EDGE is a type of project-based international virtual exchange. So group projects lie at the heart of EDGE. And faculty recognize that group projects help students build and strengthen a variety of skills, skills that are vital both to the classroom and the workplace. Next, please. Additionally, through EDGE Collaborative Projects, our students learn how to interact with people who are different from them and work with them on projects over a distance, therefore developing their intercultural competence as well as their digital skills, their intercultural interaction, project collaboration, and distance collaboration. Next, please. But EDGE partnerships also benefit faculty, as these collaborations create content for research as well as for publications and presentations. And I, met, um, I mentioned that Anna, Christina, and I worked together to present at, um, at several an international conference and, and two webinars. Um, and also Osvaldo Suki from Fateki also joined in, in those um, presentations. And so it's very beneficial for faculty because then we're able to use that to further our research and, um, and again, to present about our research. So it's also an innovative student-centered pedagogy that allows faculty to play an important role in internationalizing the curriculum. So working with an international partner, at least how I view the benefit helps to broaden my perspective and it provides further opportunity for me to reflect on my course content, on assignments and delivery to ensure that I'm preparing my students for the global marketplace. Next, please. The next slide shows the different countries in which our growing list of international partners institutions reside. And partnerships are, are critical. They, they take time to develop. And our virtual, um, often virtual exchanges grow from existing research relationships between faculty at different institutions. And, and that is, um, that's important to note because when I, when I bring faculty's attention to EDGE as an, as an option to, uh, to help strengthen our students' skills, many of them realize they're already doing similar projects with other faculty. They just didn't even know it was called EDGE or COIL or BRAVE or whatever the institution is, is referencing. And they also, because of, of the reach international reach of their research, they already have those partnerships in place. So it's not necessary for you to develop new partnerships if you already have those partnerships with faculty for other you know, research purposes. Um, next, I will share some sample EDGE projects that our faculty have developed in collaboration with their international partner. So next, please. So EDGE is new excuse me, to Penn State, um, it, our first EDGE pilot course was delivered in spring 2018 by Claudia Tanaskovic, Assistant Teaching Professor of Chemistry at the Beaver Campus. And she collaborated with uh, on an industry-based project which involves the laboratory scale production of soap and extraction of different essences with her chemistry students and chemistry students at the University of Split in Croatia via web conferencing. Next, please. So during the second week of the collaboration, students simultaneously performed the experiment following the same procedures. And they shared this experience live via WhatsApp or FaceTime on their smartphones. Next, please. 
They also explored Edge's interdisciplinary potential. So soaps were infused with essential oil, oils produced by distillation techniques in, in Biology 120, Plants, Places, and People. And then the biology students extracted mint, orange, lavender, and rosemary oils from, uh, from plants. And then the soap molds were provided by students in Art 30, Introduction to Sculpture class. And then the packaging that you see on the far right uh, was done by students in Art 10, Introduction to Visual Studies. Next, please. So here's the finished product. Um, the University of Split's creation is on the left and Penn State's creations are on the right. Next, please. Another project um, was Alan Peslak from our Penn State Scranton team. Uh, Penn State Scranton campus. He teamed with an agronomy faculty member at Seikhan Safulan Agrotechnical University in Kazakhstan in fall 2019 to develop an, um, an Android app. So Penn State information sciences and technology students developed the technical content and then um, Sagan Zafulin's agronomy students developed the domain content. So you can see the ecological factors, ecological groups, dictionary, maps, and the students made the content available both in English, if you click on the American flag in the upper right-hand corner, and also in Russian, if the user would click on the Russian flag. So you can see this is another example of interdisciplinary potential. Next, please. And then last spring, I teamed my business writing students with business students at Fateki, Presidente, Prudente in Sao Paulo, Brazil. And unfortunately, our final project was rudely interrupted by COVID-19. So we were only able to um, complete our icebreaker activity. And students were created as, as um, shown here. They were tasked with creating a day in the life video introduction of their team. So each international team um, selected two areas of focus to contrast. So housing, classrooms, activities, sports, food facilities, etc. So shown here are some of the screenshots from one of the group's videos. And the videos were fascinating as they provided a glimpse of both the similarities and the differences of both institutions. Next, please. Another example is I partnered with uh, Seikhan Safula and Agrotechnical University in Kazakhstan uh, with their um, English for Academic Purposes course in the um, uh, ecology program. And, and that was something that uh, this course, the, the English for Academic Purposes course, was brand new that semester. So our two virtual exchange projects served as that element of support for bolstering students' English proficiency. In fact, I believe it was this presentation or, or this partnership that um, that was the focus of my presentation with um, Ana Cristina. Next, please. So though my faculty partner students were required to have knowledge of basic English and be fluent in spoken English, they're often very self-conscious about their English speaking ability. So we organized our students into three working groups. Um, and using WhatsApp as a tool for communication allowed both the, the Kazutu students and the Penn State students to use tools such as Google Translate when communicating when necessary. It also gave Kazakh students an opportunity to practice their English writing skills related to their course topics. And then we avoided creating um, projects that required intensive writing, um, even though my course was a writing course because it helped to meet my global learning objective, which is listed here, to recognize and participate in cultural differences in verbal and nonverbal communication and begin to negotiate a shared understanding based on those differences. So pictured here is a what's on your plate video project. And students compiled a video of interviews of students, so five from uh, Kazakhstan and five from Penn State, discussing their food choices for their group selected topic of either breakfast, lunch, or dinner. 
and we viewed the videos during our synchronous Zoom session. And then additionally, CASA2 students did a poster presentation analyzing the nutritional value of their food choices and engaging in English discussion and answering questions from their American partners. And this session allowed the CASA2 students to practice their English presentation before presenting to the class. So they were able to test their performance with, uh, in, in engaging in English discussion with both peers and their faculty member. Next, please. So I understand uh, that EDGE may be new for many of you and, and, and maybe you just heard about International Virtual Exchange from yesterday's presentation. So if that is true, or if you just want more information, we have created an EDGE guidebook that's available on our EDGE website, link provided. And I'm sure if Tracy hasn't already, she'll be um, putting the EDGE, that website link um, in the chat. Um, and this is to guide interested faculty and administrators through the process of designing an EDGE collaborative project. Next, please. And thank you, Tracy. I see you just put the link in chat. So this EDGE guidebook will lead you through the process of developing an EDGE collaborative project as you review the content posted in each of the four modules. So in module one, launching EDGE, you'll learn how to identify a partner, an EDGE partner, and determine which of your courses you want to develop this EDGE collaborative project. Uh, module two focuses on developing a sustaining partnership. And so you'll learn what some of the key criteria are for the selection of a partner. You'll dive into um, shared global learning objectives and learn how to negotiate with your global partner. Negotiating things like um, what is the preferred method of communication? Uh, what platforms should we use or technology should we use? Um, what is the time difference between both of us? Do we want to have a synchronous sessions with our students? Will they engage, um, you know, through like a Zoom video conference or, or something similar? Or do we want them to just be able to communicate on their own using WhatsApp to complete the project? Module three is developing and delivering your collaborative pro project. So you'll learn how to determine the global learning objectives for your course, to create an edge um, collaborative project, to determine what deliverable makes sense based on what your uh, course learning objectives are, and then to create the assessment tool. And then finally, module four, uh, preparing your students for edge collaboration. And this will provide you with ideas for developing intercultural competence and cultural competency, gaining student buy-in and implementing edge into your course and learning more about the faculty who have already edged as they share their story from the field. Next, please. Regardless, I want you to be encouraged and, and to recognize that planning an EDGE collaborative project takes time. And it can take anywhere from four, to four weeks to six months. Uh, remember that EDGE is not about co-delivering a course, nor does it require an extensive overhaul of the curriculum or a dual degree program. It is simply taking one existing project in a course that you already teach, or maybe creating one additional project in that existing course, um, and redesigning it so that students can work together in international teams to complete the project together. So the keys to successful collaborations are not partnering faculty within the same academic subject, but rather partnering faculty who exhibit flexibility, patience, and open communication. So if you are interested in EDGE, and I hope you are, <laughs> uh, please email us at edge at psu.edu. And again, the, it's, it's on the screen and Tracy will put that in the chat as well so that we can continue this conversation. And, um, and Tracy, you can stop sharing the presentation so we can see everybody's faces. Thank you so much. So what questions um, may I address or, or comments or, you know, if you've already done uh, international virtual exchange, perhaps sharing ideas with your peers of, of yeah. what you've done? 